1953. Italy. Rome. The world's first jet-powered aircraft known as the Comet crashes. No one knows how. No one knows why. And the question on everyone's lips is, how can the most sophisticated model of its time simply fall out of the sky? England, London. While the whole world is watching, a team of investigators from England are selected to investigate the crash. Australian David Warren is one of them. This is the story of David Warren and his black box how Australia was the first country to put a black box on an aircraft and how we became the first nation to make it mandatory that every single aircraft must have a black box on board. Australia, Northern Territory, Groot Island. David Warren was born on March the 20th, 1925 in the Northern Territory of Australia. His parents were missionaries, therefore he moved around a lot. He went to school at Launcester Grammar School in Tasmania. Life was great. Everything was going according to plan. But then, disaster struck. One of Australia's first civil aircraft crashed. David's father was on board that plane and died on that fateful day. His last gift to his son was a ham radio set, which he loved dearly and played with any chance he got. Later, David moved to Sydney and completed his schooling at Trinity Grammar School. David graduated with the Bachelor of Science from the University of Sydney. In 1952, he moved to London to study and work, concentrating on rocket research. Once he had completed his studying, his boss told him, We're sorry David, we've trained too many people in rocket research. Can we offer you a job working with aircraft fuels? David accepted, not knowing where the path would lead him. Now we return back to where our story began. 1953, the world's first jet-powered aircraft, known as the Comet, crashes. David is assigned to investigate. There was a theory at the time. The theory was that, because the Comet flew nearly twice as high as its nearest competitor, the fuel tank might have just exploded under repetitive pressure. It was David's job to work out whether or not this theory was true. While he was sitting on a committee, figuring out the problems in the comet, an idea came to his head. This is how he described it. I kept thinking to myself, if it were a pilot error, or if it were something which were known to the crew, they may have said something or done something. If only we could recapture those last few seconds, it would save all this argument and uncertainty, we'd know what it was. Somebody may have known. And I had been, just the week before, to an instrument exhibition and seen this. Now this is the world's first pocket recorder, if you like, the Minifon, a German unit, which records on about two or three miles of very fine wire, as thick as your hair. Having an idea is one thing, selling it is quite another. When David approached his colleagues at work about his idea, they told him, If the idea was any good, we would have invented it already, or else the Americans would have. Despite this, he drew up the first black box blueprint and approached his boss about it. His boss went as far as to say, If I find you talking about this matter to anyone, including me, I'll have you fired. He was still not discouraged and wrote a letter to the Australian government, the Department of Civil Aviation. This is how he describes their response. Our first effort was to try and get the Australian authorities on side, and so we wrote them a letter, and their reply was, uh, to go and send us three pages of what was required then in aircraft, as if we weren't quite sure, uh, and then the statement, and so you see Dr Warren's invention has no immediate significance in civil aviation. It really seemed his idea had no use, and just when he thought it was all over, his time to shine was just around the corner. One day, David's boss walked past his desk and said, David? I've got a friend here from the UK. Tell him about that record idea of yours. David, not knowing how important Sir Robert Hardingham was, 
being the UK Air Registration Board's secretary, told him all about his idea in great detail and enthusiasm. His response was, That's a great idea. Get this old chap on the next plane to England. David thought he was mad until his boss said, Well, what are you waiting for, David? Get your passport ready. Finally, he had found someone who liked his idea. He soon found himself lecturing in England about his device. He brought his idea to Canada, where they appreciated it too. It seemed home was the only place that didn't accept David's idea. But then, in 1960, Australia had another major plane crash. And the Department of Civil Aviation said if they had a black box on board, it would have definitely helped in the investigation. Therefore, a judge made the law that all of Australia's planes must have a black box on board by next year, making Australia the first country to make black boxes mandatory on all aircrafts. In 1962, July 7th, Alitalia Flight 771 crashes trying to land in Bombay. It is the worst crash in India's aviation history. Everyone on board died. This was the first time the investigators were able to tell the family and friends why their loved ones were lost. This is because the black box was used to find the cause of the crash for the first time. I think I can safely say that David Warren is an extraordinary man that has changed aviation history significantly. Do you know of any incidents where the, the black box has really shown its importance in an, in an investigation? Well, I think the most important one of recently is Air France 447, which was an Airbus uh, A330 that disappeared over the Atlantic at, and they searched for nearly three years uh, for evidence as to what went wrong with that aircraft and they, it was the most expensive search in history and one of the principal items I was searching for was the black box and funnily enough it's called black but as we all know it's orange and they eventually found it but it was, uh, it was a major, major search and that box was necessary to find out what actually happened to the aeroplane. David Warren, the inventor of the black box, mm -hmm. what do you think about his contributions to your industry? Well the black box has changed aviation because you can have an accident and you can find the, the rubble in the ground or remnants of a car accident and if you don't know what's happened then, then you really can't determine how you're going to recover from the incident, discover what went wrong and work out what to do as a consequence to stop the incident happening again. The black box is more professionally known as the flight data recorder. The flight data recorder consists of two devices, the flight cockpit voice recorder and the flight data information recorder. The flight cockpit voice recorder records the conversations going on in the cockpit and the flight data information recorder records the data from the instruments on the aircraft. The first black box was made in 1957 it was able to record the last four hours of conversation in the cockpit and the flight data information recorder was able to record from eight instruments every two seconds. The black box voice recorder normally records two hours of conversation in the cockpit before the plane goes down. So the black box that David Warren invented on the aircraft like a 330 that stores 3,000 parameters. On a, on a A380, it stores 30,000 30, parameters. So when we have an incident, we can go back through the black box and we can find out exactly what happened, which includes a voice recorder. So we know what the pilots are saying. We know what the, the aircraft is doing performance-wise and what the instruments are saying. And that we can do a forensic analysis on that and work out how the aircraft crashed, work out what, why it crashed, and prevent future crashes. But today, all that information isn't stored in the same way it used to be. It is now stored into a tiny little chip. You're probably wondering how this tiny little chip survives a plane crash. Well, it's not the flimsy outer casing that is painted orange. It's the framing inside that keeps it from being destroyed. It goes through many tests to make sure it is basically indestructible. You burn the equipment for an hour at 1100 degrees Celsius. That simulates the first hot burn when there's a lot of fuel. 
That's followed by a 10-hour smoldering fire, a 30-day immersion in seawater, 24 hours of 20,000 feet of atmospheric pressure, and finally getting dunked into every kind of airline fluid imaginable that a box may come into contact with during a crash. Can you see the black box on other types of mass transports like boats, trains, ferries, and things like that? Uh, most transport systems are moving to some form of black box. Currently there's not a requirement, for instance, to have a, a flight data recorder or a black box in uh, smaller type aeroplanes, but anywhere the travelling public uh, travel, uh, no matter how many it is really, there's a fair justification uh, to have that black box extended to say a 20 seat aeroplane with 20 to 40 passengers. I suspect a modern car's uh, navigation system, a GPS could be adapted to record things like uh, speed and G and direction of travel and point of impact etc so that basic information could be found out fairly quickly. Now, you don't know how you're going to be out of the accident, whether you're going to be able to remember everything, whether you're going to um, be injured to the point that you can't testify uh, or tell the police or tell the accident investigators what the problem was. I'm sure you can all see how amazing his invention was, though he was never, ever given enough credit for it. It was many long years before he got his first award for creating the black box. It was in 2002 where he was first awarded for his contributions to aviation. He was awarded an Order of Australia, an OA. Later, in 2007, he was included in the top 100 living geniuses list, and his final award was given to him in 2008 by Qantas. They named one of their huge A380s after him. I think David Warren wasn't credited enough for his great idea. I note the man who approved of David's idea, Sir Robert Hardingham, has been honoured at the Gatwick Airport. But what about the Australian Government? What can the Australian Government do to honour David Warren, I have a proposal. It is a common tradition worldwide to name an airport after a local hero. The Italians named their Rome airport the Leonardo da Vinci airport. The Austrians named their airport the Mozart airport. And the Americans loved JFK so much they named two airports after him. I think that we should have an Australian airport named after David Warren. Well, I've finished my black box documentary and I've loved creating it. From the beginning, I've always been a fan of mysteries and I've seen all the episodes of Air Crash Investigation. I knew that the black box was really the main part of the investigation, but I didn't know that the man who invented the black box was Australian. At first, I thought I was going to present my information in poster form, but then I remembered if I didn't make another video soon, I'd probably forget how to use my video editing skills. So I got to work making another video using all the skills I'd learned from my previous documentary on Tunguska. I've learned a lot of interesting facts. There were so many firsts in David's life. He was a real pioneer. I admire David for his ingenuity and conviction, but most of all for his perseverance with his idea, despite all his doubters. Initially, David was asked to solve a small problem to do with the fuel. And I think as a society, we can learn to not just think small problem, but big picture and long term, like David did.
During my assignment, there have been so many highlights, but most of all, I've loved doing the interviews. First, with David Warren's son, Peter Warren, then with Captain Woodward, and my final interview was with Captain De Crepony.